Hi, my name is Joshua and in this video I'm going to talk about migrating a more complex payload project from 1.0 to 2.0. So in this video we're talking about an actual deploy project that is fairly big and fairly complex. It is this one, it is the backend from a course platform which is actually live and it looks like that where you can take courses and so on. And at the same time this is thought to be kind of an CMS CRM system at the same time where you have customers uh, or where you organize customers for example we have companies uh, do, please don't be irritated by it being in Germany uh, in German but I couldn't translate all of that for this video now so you have companies and they have a lot of custom views so you have uh, notes for example and a custom drawer uh, contacts you have a list where from multiple data sources like events are put together and this is the project we're talking about and today is supposed to be kind of a case study i upgraded it to 2.0 which now looks like this and we are going to go through the whole process or uh, to be more specific about the things things that changed and um, that probably are going to break your code base uh, in some ways so yes we can take this project to learn a little bit from. And the first thing that we needed to do is, of course, to uh, change the config and install payload 2.0. Started with the database, like I already talked about in the last video. We put uh, the new database in the Mongoose adapter with the URI. Uh, we need to specify the webpack. And here with the editor that we also need to specify, we already need, already need to think about the, the first important thing. And that is we had the slate data or the slate editor beforehand and now want to use the lexical editor. And as of a few days ago, there is this slate to lexical feature that you can import simply also from the lexical package. So we have import the lexical editor, the lexical slate feature from rich text lexical. And if you include it, it will simply render all the um, text you, rich text you had with Slate in the lexical editor. I can show you an example. So in, in an individual course, I have a description, which I hastily put together here. And if we go, ah, this is already in lexical. And if we go into the old project, then we have it here with Slate. So another thing, that needed to change, which is uh, which was a fairly breaking change, is custom views. So, for example, for inventories and um, warehouses, we have this custom view. So this is a warehouse, and then we have like an overview with that warehouse that lists the items in a special way and makes it also possible to uh, put in new informations right into in the list. And this is a completely custom view. Originally. In the in the version 1.0, we did this by. Ah, oh, I cannot click it with. <laughs> okay, um, we did it by using a custom route uh, that points from this path to this component, and in a new version, we need to change that because we don't use routes anymore. We use uh, views. So here you see we define a custom view, the dashboard view, and in 2.0 we also add our other custom views with paths to that um, to that object. So now I defined a warehouse view with the same path and the same component. And if we look at the project, so here we are in the warehouse view with the custom path and in the new one find warehouses we're going to the overview and we have the same thing if you're wondering how we're making we are creating this view as it is a completely custom view we can use the default template that is provided to us from payload so this is the warehouse and what we're doing is uh, first of all we're using the step nav hook because with the step nav hook we can set what is shown in this uh, navigation bar at the top also in the old view as you can see here we also have a a brow 
but this is part of the view. In the new version, the A brow is already part of this top bar, so we don't need to include it in our view anymore. And then what we do at the bottom here is, yes, we use the leaf default template, we use the meta tag and the gutter, and now we get this layout and could, can put our own content in. The next thing, thing that had to change, there are some more smaller things, is the size of the icon. As you can see, it was pretty big here and it now needs to be smaller. Um, we're using Tailwind CSS for the styling, uh, the custom styling, and the right height seemed to be H8. And yes, another small thing that needed to change is um, if we go to warehouses again, this button. By default, it had a very large padding at the top and the bottom, so we needed to overwrite that as well. And the last thing that we changed was the style of the icon because we really didn't like this um, old icon style. So as we're using Tailwind, we already have a CSS file here and we defined new styles or at least changed the border. Another thing I noticed is we have this overshoot and then this button is in front of the text. So we also put a background background white on the button. So it does not look weird. If it would be transparent, then this would look awful. Um, yes, so these are all the changes we needed to make to um, the Palo project. And I hope this was helpful to you and see you the next time.